Here, college campuses across the country are devastated with more than 1,700 deaths caused by alcohol misuse, binge drinking, and hazing. I'm Robin Wright Penn. I'm an actress as well as a parent of two teenagers. My children are a few years from entering college, but my concern for them is real and justified. Shortly, you will see a preview of the film Haze. You will understand my concern. In late 2004, a tragedy that involved incoming freshman Gordy Bailey fell especially hard upon the University of Colorado, a hazing incident that shook the foundations of higher education across the country, but not nearly enough. Gordy's story, similar to so many others, needs to be told, and the social influences affecting our young people, their behavior and safety, need to be understood. Hayes was created with the hope that young adults, parents, and leaders in this nation will wake up to this crisis. The goal? To encourage awareness and responsibility. To save the life of a fraternity brother or sorority sister. A teammate, a friend, a son or daughter. Nancy? I need to get an ambulance. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Boulder. Where in, where in Boulder? Give me an address. 1080 14th Street. 1080 14th Street? Yeah. What's going on? Uh, we got a guy who's passed out. He drank way too much and we found him this morning. Is he breathing? Uh, I don't know. He's not waking up. Every year on America's college campuses, uh, 700,000 kids are injured as a result of alcohol abuse. 1,700 kids die as a result of alcohol abuse. 22% of America's college students meet the medical diagnostic criteria for alcohol or drug abuse or addiction, which means we have a major public health problem on our nation's campuses. And this is at 1080 14th, correct? It is. How old do you think he is? Uh, maybe 18, 19. Wake How up. do you know he was drinking? Uh, I got back last night and they were, a bunch of them were all drinking. Okay, so he's passed out inside the house? No, inside. Is there an apartment number? Uh, no, it's just a fraternity. Okay, is he on the floor or? He's on the floor. A lot of times you, you drink to get drunk, but you can't die from it. It's, it's that serious. You can't die. How did we as adults, or, or even people who work with, with young people, where is it that we didn't give them the message? I've seen students who get very scientific, try to make calculations about how much they can drink and what level they're going to have. We're seeing an increase in binge drinking across the board with youth today. And I've seen those same students wind up in the hospital with significant alcohol poisoning. Where is it that we didn't say, if your friend is unconscious, you need to call 911. You've got a small subset going crazy when they drink, and that subset is just going crazier and crazier. Most kids come to college with pre-established drinking patterns. This is five beers in 15 seconds, in honor of the 54 points you scored again. When they get to college and they're surrounded by thousands of peers, um, often these patterns uh, really um, uh, become out of control. We've created a culture now where from the highest levels of government to parents, we're not preparing our kids to take responsibility for their actions. I don't think parents are aware of what their kids are being asked to navigate, particularly when they go to college. 700,000 kids are injured. Scrapes with the legal system somewhere between 16 and 23 percent. How's it going, folks? Eleven percent of people had unwanted sexual contact. Yeah! Yeah! Why are you not? It's a fucking ass to fucking hey, you come here. One percent had rapes reported or unreported. Assaults 
11 percent. All of those consequences of excess behavior have long-term consequences for the life chances of the college student. If you were to go around a campus with some sort of like you know, problem detector that got louder as you get closer to the center of the problem, it would probably go crazy in, in fraternity houses. Do you fuckers have any fucking respect for how weak? What do you mean my eyes are open? <laughs> in your average fraternity on your average college campus, chapter presidents are 20 years old, are 19 years old, are under the age of 21, and they are the individuals specifically charged with managing a product that they legally cannot consume themselves. Hazing may not be a big deal on any given college campus today, but if there's any form of hazing, the chances are that will continue to build. Hey, give us more hot sauce. It's kind of cold. Oh, good, it? We're seeing some behaviors here that are making me think that the hazing is not to incorporate people totally into the group, but to use them more and more for cheap entertainment. Do you can tell if he's breathing or not? It doesn't look like it. You don't think what? It doesn't look like what? It looks like he's breathing very much at all. At all or not, not very much? It doesn't look like it at all. One of the hardest things for me in thinking about Gordy is how easily it could have been avoided. High Psych Fraternity killed one of their pledges. I, I, there's, there's a more politically correct way of saying that, but the reality is the Kai Psychs killed one of their pledges. You're going to go in in groups of three, and you have to be prepared to be on your feet because they'll rip you apart. They took their pledges up in the mountains, gave them uh, a bunch of hard liquor and some wine and some beer and said, don't come back till it's gone. Once I was, you know, Gordy, I was like, Gordy, you're so, you're so fucked up right now. Like, you know, I took a picture of him to show him the next day, like how, like how drunk he looked, you know. His eyes were rolling back in his head, could not verbally communicate. And the birds knew he was in trouble because they took him to the library and put him on a couch to, uh, I guess, just sleep it off. And he certainly didn't understand that if he did find himself in a position of harm from this circumstance, that his brothers would sit there and simply carry him to a couch and lay him on a couch. It was that at that point where, you know, somebody, I don't know who it was, got out like the Sharpie. It was one of those things, it's tradition, you know. If he had writing on the back of his calf, my guess was he had writing everywhere else besides his face. Your last memory of your friend is coloring him in or writing penis on his face. I think it was only when they found out that uh, Gordy had passed away that the brothers felt uh, uh, horrible about what they had done. It certainly made uh, their intentions in writing on his body uh, look uh, even worse than they had intended. Not only did these guys not call for help for this kid, but um, they're somehow trying to clean him up. So they did their best to uh, erase those marks from his body unsuccessfully. And so it first came in as this may be alcohol poisoning, and then it comes in unconscious, unresponsive, but maybe not breathing. When the EMTs get, these get there, he's already gone. Uh, he'd been in Boulder three weeks at, the, at that time. There isn't a single commercial establishment in this country that if they served you alcohol and you collapsed in front of them, would let you lay on that floor for nine hours before making a decision to call 911. And that's the fraternity setting. The, the, the reality is it wasn't the alcohol that killed him. He was hazed to death. Definitely the hardest.
hardest part is to think of him on that couch for hours with nobody helping him. The thing that makes him mad is that he was found on the floor face down. And somebody could have could have called for help and this wouldn't have happened. All my cousins have their brothers and sisters and my friends and I won't get to have that. I think that's the hardest part. A mother losing a child can't do anything but feel like you've done a bad job. Your your job is to protect your children. And I'll always feel a certain responsibility and uh, a certain sense that I let him down. Ready to wake up?